Hey, Shiv. Yes, Jess? This week's been really busy and I haven't been able to keep up with what's going on social-wise. Can you fill me in? Um, yeah, I, sh- I guess so. Great. And can I record it and put it on the internet? Um, if, if you want? Yes. Hashtag content. This is Socialized by Socialized for all you social guys. So, big moves being made by Facebook. They're officially shutting down their TikTok clone app, which is called Lasso. Don't know if you've actually heard about it. It's been around for two years. They're basically going to be moving all their money and resources to developing Instagram Reels, which is what we saw last week. Um, They're not only going to be in Brazil, they're now going to be in Germany and France as well, uh, rolling out slowly across the globe. And very interestingly, since TikTok got banned in India the other day because of their altercation with China, they're also going to be testing in India. Oh, that's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. They just had that ready to go. Yeah, like just it's waiting like, for the right wait, moment. Did they know something was yeah. coming? Because like timing-wise, they to to pick this like just after last week when the news came through. I mean, it's must be a little bit of a, like a worrying thing for TikTok right now. Yeah, they're they're poised to. Uh, they're poised to lose six billion dollars due to the ban. It's um, insane. But they're not the only Chinese app to be banned. No. Um, they're among uh, TikTok and um, they're among around fifty nine banned I feel apps. Like TikTok well. had a really bad week last week. Yeah, it did not because like well. you know Instagram announcing reels is like that's not you know it is a bit of a threat. Like yeah. we, we we you know we know that Instagram has been successful before in cloning and stealing. Stealing, not stealing, I don't know, <laughs> um, ideas from other, like Snapchat, when they bought in stories, it was so effective, like who, you know, so many people moved across to stories because they've already got an audience, they've already got, like creators, it makes sense for creators who have a platform already on Instagram, you know, rather than trying to start their new accounts on TikTok, I mean. They can just do, they can just. Do what they've always done. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, there are two types of TikTokers at the moment, right? There are the people that never really had a platform on Instagram. They really couldn't find Mm. their voice. Um, And so when they discovered the app, it really allowed them to create their own craft. Whereas the other people are kind of jumping on the bandwagon, previous Instagram influencers and things like that, who know that this format is the future. So if Instagram comes out and say like, hey, guys, you don't even have to leave the app. You can just do it within here. I've got a little tab called Top Reels for you. Don't worry. We're bringing it to you. Why leave? You don't um, have to stop building another audience. Exactly. You're just, you know, you're, you're Instagram is going to become definitely more vertical. Uh, Facebook is just attacking the vertical format in all sorts of forms. If you actually go onto your Facebook app, um, yeah. at the top, it has the stories and you can actually see more stories. And they've got a very interesting layout where it's just a whole feed of stories, kind of like IGTV, where it's just all, you know, mm. not like a nine grid. But okay. essentially of stories. So is that the future of Instagram? Possibly. I don't know. Um, but I think that's we'll just have to see what the top reels tabs look like. Well certainly um, it's gonna have a captive audience in India. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean to be fair, like, you know, Instagram's not the only one doing this. YouTube has also released their form of a TikTok fifteen second vertical format. Um, so, you know, bite dance, look out, just saying. Yeah. I mean it's obviously Good uh, imitation's the best form of flattery. Hundred <laughs> percent. I don't know. <laughs> it also definitely leads to your downfall. But I mean, Snapchat. <laughs> you know what? I mean, I would say that um, Snapchat has always found a way to come back even stronger. Mm-hmm. They've always, you know, they they're probably the most innovative when it comes to being a platform. Besides Pinterest, those you know, both those platforms have always look to create very different offerings like the snap map feature which is essentially implementing a more stalkery version of google maps <laughs> into snapchat so you can follow your friends around yeah like that's okay or, or know when they go out without you exactly right <laughs> <laughs> and like i mean they're bringing businesses to it now so um it, i mean this sort of thing tends to push platforms to innovate yeah. and to get better um it so you know instagram feel free to create your own TikToks, reels, if you want to call them for whatever reason. Um, I'm sure TikTok will come back with something stronger. So, yeah, I mean, I, and I think, as you said before, like TikTok, they, they are TikTok creators who are specifically TikTok creators. Yeah. yeah. They love the platform, especially the younger generations. Yeah. I think you're going to see more millennials that have moved onto TikTok probably shifting back to yeah. Instagram. 
I think that's you gonna see move. But I think like the Gen Z. Yeah, I think TikTok will be their realm to play with. You know, yeah. yeah. There's like so many subcultures on TikTok, and I just don't see yeah. some of the weirder ones. I don't like, you know, like. Alt TikTok and elite TikTok, <laughs> you know, like yeah, the Dasani water bottle getting like yeah, you know, cyber bullied by other Fiji water and stuff. Like yeah. that's not going to move. I don't see that moving yeah. to Instagram. Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. But then I think that's a really good point. Maybe there's going to be, a, you know, the 15 second vertical format. It's not just going to be raw, organic, or stuff like that. Maybe it'll just go on Instagram. There'll be more beauty lifestyle sort of content yeah. versus like trying to do silly dances and stuff like that, that feels more instagram yeah, yeah. you know at the yeah, end of the day indeed. it is a photo it's it started off as a photo platform and it just evolved beyond that so maybe it'll be aesthetic aesthetically pleasing tiktoks but know. still like it's still built with music in mind so. it yeah exactly yeah. but like a more like high fashion sort of situation yeah. bougie <laughs> bougie yeah it'll be the bougie tiktok maybe that's bougie tiktok, bougie TikTok. <laughs> Real. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, um, vertical, I think that's, it's just showing you, like, I think everything's shifting that way. Yeah. We've got to, you've got to keep thinking vertical. Yeah. 1000%. Like, like you, you, you heard about Quibi, right? No, it's Quibi. So Quibi is a, uh, okay, look, it hasn't done brilliantly. It's interesting concept though. What it's like, a, it's like trying to be like a Netflix streaming, but it's all it makes is they're all like series that are each episode's only 10 minutes long and they're all like designed to be vertical to watch oh. vertically so it's like a little bit experimental they haven't quite met the projections that they sort of said when they were first launching and they put a lot of money into like a-list celebrities mm-hmm. and like big names that maybe aren't used to making short form content so maybe mm-hmm. there's something they can learn from that but it's interesting it's certainly interesting to see a platform that's vertical first yeah you know, entertainment platform, a streaming platform that's vertical first. Uh, Regardless of what the platform is, it's very obvious that the future is vertical. Yeah. I just feel like all platforms are experimenting with formats now. It's just, you know, I think it's going to be the golden age of formats. TikTok has really kicked um, all platforms into gear. So Twitter is, you know, kind of invent... Twitter is uh, innovating their own version of stories, which they call fleets. Okay. Fleeting tweets. Um, I mean, I like the rhyming scheme. Know, but... right? It's cute. What <laughs> are they going to come up with next? Sheets. And sheets. <laughs> sheets. Yeah, notes. Beats. Twitter notes. Sheets. Sheets. Yeah. Beats. The Twitter music. Musical, musical voice notes. Yes. Meets. Okay. It meets. Oh, I mean, oh my gosh, yes. Then with like online Twitter. chats. Twitter online chats. Yeah, Twitter, get on this. Yeah. Speak to us. Speak to us. We reach can help us you. At, I, reach us at Socialize Agency on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you prefer Twitter, seeing as that's your platform. I mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> anyway, back Fleets. to this. Tell me. Fleets. So it's what they've done is very cool because instead of going all out and either cloning, uh, you know, like a Snapchat beautiful format and calling it your own, they're actually just innovating a, the popular story format. Uh, what they've done is they've added a collaborative feature in their fleeting. Fleeting? In their fleets. fleets. So what you can do essentially is two people can create a fleet together. It shows up kind of like a little double bubble. Um, Essentially, one of the things that Twitter said was it's a way to sort of have a live conversation with somebody in this story format without being, you know, interrupted or not interrupted, without being, you know, without having loads of people speaking to you at the same time. So any like for example, anytime you post a question on Twitter, not as a poll, but like just a general question to start a conversation, you know, when you share a hashtag, loads of people will then respond to your hashtag, but then it just, you know, dilutes the conversation. Because yeah, and it's so hard to have a speaking. conversation with like exactly hundreds and hundreds yeah. of people like, exactly. at the same time. Yeah, so this is essentially meant to be a variation of stories where you and I could have a conversation within our story format, our fleet, and people will be able to see it. It just opens up the doors for like, you know, how we could do interviews, you know, maybe there's meme wars in there, you know, it like, you could just see like, you know, little rivalries happening between like a Wendy's and like, yeah. you know, literally anybody else, um, just them having a little collaborative feature if they ever did that. But it's it's quite cool. Um, Instagram does have this, but they only really have it in Instagram Live. Mm-hmm. Um, so who knows, maybe, you know, collaborative stories are going to be the thing of the next thing for vertical formats. 
I mean, I think that's really cool. I think, especially in a world like I know we're coming out of the COVID mm. threat in some ways. The world, the world is like it's not. We're not out of the threat, but lockdowns are lifting in general. Yeah. But people are going to be traveling less, and people are going to be less like mobile and more like you know. For, when you say like things for interviews, that makes so much sense mm. because you can sort of interact with people a bit more and have intelligent conversations without having to have like as many meetings format for forums and you know yeah exactly like i mean you could see how that could work in so many different ways because like you'll see how so many tv shows and things like that have you know started using lives or like just different you know house party and things like that to you know host their shows or to launch you know like um their up and coming TV shows and doing trailers on that. So Mindy Kaling's show Never Have I Ever actually talked about their second season coming up. Um, they announced it via a house party call. So imagine like this sort of format could open the doors to doing even more collaborations in different ways versus like just the normal like m- conference call between people. Yeah, we we kind of used to the Zoom format now. Like yeah. maybe it's time to shift it up a little bit. Yeah, and it's um. It feels very, like, very Twitter. It feels like yeah. they're going to take it and make it about conversation, which is yeah. what Twitter's all about, right? Yeah. And it's it's all about back and forth and yeah. dialogue. Yeah. If, it is a bit annoying because it's still not rolled out here, but it has been rolled out to Brazil, Italy, and India. Why did um, Brazil get everything first? I don't know. They got reels. They and got they, they have WhatsApp pay. Like, they just seem to be the testing ground for a lot of... Interesting. Uh, I wonder why. Yeah, I'm not really sure why they're the main testing we'll ground. We'll pull back next week. Yeah, we'll come back to you guys. <laughs> Um, if you know the reason, at us, a socialized agency. <laughs> if you're from Brazil and you know, fleet us. <laughs> yeah, but we probably won't be able to read it. So. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Something happened over the weekend that really shook up the gaming world. I'm sure you know about this. Uh, Byron Bernstein, a.k.a. Reckful, uh, took his life um, a few days ago. Um to call him a pioneer on the platform would be a gross understatement. He was one of the first gamers to populate uh, and gain a mass following on Twitch. Uh, for anyone who ever played World of Warcraft, you know, he was the first player to ever hit a 3k rating, um, which is a testament to his obscene skill at the craft. Uh, he, at many points, he openly discussed his struggle with mental health, you know, and including bipolar disorder and depression. Um, it was nice to see World of Warcraft extend, you know, its condolences to Bernstein's friends and family. Um, what was even more beautiful was to see the hundreds of Warcraft players who actually logged on all at once to honor Reckful, uh, with an in-game memorial on Thursday afternoon. Yeah, that was great. I think it's, it's, you it's, there needs to be a discussion about this because I do think we keep seeing more and more gamers and people, you know, there seems to be a weird pattern. I don't know. Like... I mean, almost a year ago, well, I think it was end of June, um, Etika, I don't know if you know you know who that is. He was a another YouTube gamer, another popular one who committed suicide as well. It's just that there seems to be, there needs to be a better conversation about mental health, especially with gamers. On the weekend, I was watching a lot of Dr. K. Um, he has the Healthy Gamer GG uh, channel on YouTube. And obviously, well, more he's more of a Twitch streamer, actually, but... Um, he actually, one of the things that really made his channel blow up was he had a lot of conversations with um, Redfall, which is one of those things. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's, you get some insight, I suppose. That's what, when you were saying about him opening up about it before. But um, he put out a really interesting video talking about how, you know, about toxicity and talking about how, you know, we need to like, be more open and talking about these things and it's it was really really insightful I, I recommend anyone who's feeling it to um watch it it was really really great um playing games is almost the same as logging on to your instagram or tiktok to connect with other people it is a social network in its own right yeah um each game has their own platform in which you know gamers interact i mean they literally are (laughs) they're playing with each other and there are these huge bonds that come across like that come from within that um i can definitely see the region you know kind of realizing the power of gaming especially with esports um very recently but i think it's easy to think that this is just a you know a problem or something that's found in a 
you know, a different country, the West or anything like that. Mm. But we have a huge gaming population here too, you know, and the beauty of games is that it doesn't have any boundaries, you know, in yeah. terms of like, it doesn't like games don't have borders unless you're talking about yeah. like servers and ping. <laughs> um, but besides that, you know, people play with people around the world. And um, so if it's happening there, it's happening here. Yeah. You know, just I mean, because I mean, it's not happening in English doesn't mean it's not happening. One of the things I liked what Dr. K was saying was how, um, although we are super connected and we're playing games with each other, it is quite isolating still. We still yeah. not, you know, and especially for these streamers who have hundreds of people following them. And it's not really, it's about find, still trying to find like connections and stuff because I think we still, the computer only interacting through the computer sometimes. Yeah. Does, it does leave you feeling disconnected. That's a really good segue and, into my next thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I do agree. I'm, I'm loving, I, I know a lot of people don't like the cancel culture, but I do believe that the, you know, the real purpose of it is important to draw out, you know, people who are, you know, harmful to others uh, out into the spotlight so they can't, you know, so they're not hiding the shadows anymore and doing their dirty work. So um, coming on to a story of where that happened, you know, really close to home. Um, so the Internet blew up the other day in Egypt because, you know, everyone gathered around and started posting about one man called Ahmed Zaki in his, you know, 20s, who's a university student at AUC. And basically, he's been accused of uh, rape, sexual harassment, oh, I and assault. Seen that. Yeah, and I didn't know what it was about. Yeah, it's it's and it, it's so obviously all the Egyptians that we work with, like, yeah. all, like sharing it. Yeah, we can. It, it was it's very very. Uh, it was quite serious as well when you read the stories of what the women have come out to say. So, um, the posting started on Wednesday, and by night time, more than fifty women came out saying that he has you know um engage with them you know in a harmful way so um Jeez. yeah so it's it, it and it's some of the stuff is really shocking you know and i can't believe it because a lot of discussion has come from it like just like you said you know the our our egyptian colleagues have been talking about it they tell us about their own instances where you know they've been like sexually harassed on the streets and things like that it just goes to show that how in one day social media can really you know highlight a conversation to the yeah. point where it's pushing people to come out and talk about something mm -hmm. and to band together yeah make them feel like it's safe to speak about yeah it. and they're not alone yeah exactly I think that's that's quite a that's quite a counterpoint to our previous story <laughs> is like sometimes Sometimes Something, it can be good. Social media can, can be, be good. Used for good. Um, but then, you know, then it took a south turn because oh. <laughs> a another influencer who's very, very famous, and you know, a lot of brands have actually worked with her, Hadia Galeb, had a very strange um, take on this, where she kind of came out not necessarily in support of him, but kind of didn't really blame him for his actions on a story, oh. and then she came out after that, <laughs> saying. Um, that she was, you know, open to having Ahmed Zaki and his victims come on conference calls with her, you know, where she won't be the judge or the jury. She's just going to, you know, be um, an objective sort of moderator, I guess, um, and host these conversations and then post them on her channel. Why is she asserting herself in this? I do not know. What, the clout? Like, what's, what I is this about? I don't even know. So that's... So that Please happened. Kind of, you know, let's have a discussion and we'll put you on the same level as your... As the as person your, the who's person. raped you. Yeah. So, no. Like, we're going to give him a voice. Let mm -hmm. him have a chance. To, what? Yeah, I don't... It's just... It was just very strange. Um, so she's, you know... So she's been cancelled over the weekend, <laughs> essentially. Um, yeah. But, yeah. But, I, you know, it was... It, whilst that was really strange to see from to come from an influencer who's got like such a huge following it was good to see so many people come immediately and say like i cannot believe that you would say that hadia so yeah. um it seems that the internet is banding together to support these women for now and we really hope that continues and that you know uh given ad evidence and everything like that that ahmed zaki gets um trial. yeah it would be crazy if we, you know, didn't talk about this story in the beginning of July. Um, as we all know, state hate, state hate, state hate. <laughs> as, stop hate for profit. Yeah, as we all know, stop hate for profit started July 1st, where 400 advertisers promised to pause all Facebook spending for a month 
um, with the likes of Starbucks, Verizon, Coca Cola, Coca Cola. So they're doing it globally for 30 days. Uh, and Unilever, the scariest one, is doing it till the end of the year. Wow. Um, so yeah, I love, I love it when brands want to like one up each other. Like, I, yeah, <laughs> it's great. It, it's competition for. The good, good of the rest of us. I like, guess. I want better PR headlines. Yeah. So I'm going to do something even better for yeah. the world. <laughs> That's kind of like, it's the best case scenario. It's kind of, you know, what's weird about it is, you know, Facebook has so many platforms. So have they just turned it off specifically on Facebook? Is it, you know, are they in- also including Instagram? Are they including the audience network? There's just so many different offerings when you say you're going to pause on Facebook. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we'll, we'll digress later on that. Um, Facebook did come back with an official response from their VP, Nick Clegg. So they said a bunch of things, but the three main takeaways are that they absolutely do not stand to profit from hate. Um, They will remove any content that promotes, you know, they will remove any hateful content. However, when it comes to, you know, the posts that got this started in the first place, which are these, you know, posts made by political figures that are inciting violence or aka um, his a- orangeness yeah <laughs> his orange highness um donald trump who trump basically still skin. trump will still skin who uh basically Sorry, i just want to keep like naming silly names for <laughs> <laughs> speed trump that's not yeah. good uh, it's, not, it's not good but anyway. i mean yeah so i mean uh this all started with the post from trump which basically was encouraging people to you know uh start shooting when the looting starts um yeah. So, sh- essentially inciting violence through a very, you know... This is uh, during the Black Lives Matter protests. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically inciting violence during... With a really, really, really tone-deaf, you know... Yeah. I mean, I post. think that, that line as well, I think that's something that was used. It's it, There's, like, a history to it as well. Is it? Like, it was used during... Um, I don't know if it was the Civil Rights Movement or previously, like when people were enacting like Jim Crow laws, like fell on it's like a proper white supremacist kind of like history it has. Like it's it's a I think you're right. Yeah. No, I remember it because it it, it made it, I remember seeing it on the news when he said it because people were like he's actually getting his playbook from white supremacists <laughs> which is just like I'm just gonna lean into the racism. <laughs> like it's fine. I can't, you know He's just, I don't know, appealing to the lowest common denominator. You, as a private company like Facebook, you have more. Um, you have a duty to your stakeholders. You're not. not you're not meant to be this like ethical, you know, like playing by your own rule yeah. book sort of situation. Like you shouldn't be making that. If your stakeholders are telling you, "Hey, listen, you need to take down content like this," then you should. So yeah. No, I mean, I think it, I'm really glad that they've come up with the second statement, at least, because I think, like, Mark Zuckerberg's, like, town hall, whatever it was, that he did, like, right after the, the news kind of blew up, was very unsatisfactory. Like, yeah. I, I didn't feel like it anyone definitely... was happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> it came it came out of, you know, Unilever, I think, pulling out their, yeah, I mean, gl- like, their up. spending. Um, that's a lot of brands. And yeah, and to do it not just for thirty days, but till the end of the year. Yeah, I think that that's really a panic. Yeah, that was a that led to a panic <laughs> live stream. Hit, hit, hit him where it hurts. Yeah, it, there is two sides to every coin. Like at the end of the day, it is apparent. It is obvious that Facebook is doing more. Whether it, they're doing enough is a different question. But they are, you know, they have been assessed by the European Commission, and they did find that Facebook ex- like. They did find that Facebook assessed 95% of hate speech reports in less than 24 hours, faster than YouTube or Twitter. So it is it is the better platform, but at the end of the day, there's definitely more hate on there. there. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's why they've got to deal with that. I don't know. Like, I just feel like no one wants, especially as we run into an election... Yeah. No no one, is, no one wants um, another Cambridge Analytica... People yeah. putting <laughs> putting people putting like stuff using Facebook to manipulate everyone. Yeah. Like I worry about that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That's probably why they have to be faster than YouTube and Twitter when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. yeah. The we are social network as you Which, know our our code is yeah. essentially the fact that you know we will connect people and brands in meaningful ways. Um but it is becoming more apparent like the only way to really connect with a person is to you know 
to understand what it's like to be a person and a person has opinions and it's yeah. they stand for things you and can't be a faceless corporation yeah you all. can't be a product your yeah. brand is not a product it is now a living breathing thing and a living breathing thing has thoughts feelings and they need to and we need to know who they are because otherwise how do we align with what you're doing yeah there are so many people who sell shoes there's so many people who sell clothes there's so many people who are hospitals yeah. let alone so then why am i coming to you who what do you stand for yeah you know as this brand persona um and now people just i, I think the time to be silent is over like you need to pick a side the brands that do will always come out on top you will see Bren and jerry's plastered everywhere it's like everybody's yeah. dream ice cream brand just because they they have a str- it's so obvious what ben and jerry stand for and you can get behind it because yeah. they're they're named after people for christ's yeah, sake I mean, I, your your ideals your your you know your ethics like align and you feel yeah. like these people are doing something good i like them they yeah. speak you know and that and that's what it comes down to like building brand loyalty now yeah cannot just be like i've got the best product i don't think yeah your relationship with your consumers has to be a people first relationship it has to be a relationship between two people one just happens to be a brand with 50 people working behind it yeah like ben and jerry's has a really good um system where they've picked a few causes you know and the, the goal is to pick a few causes as well don't just go for all of them ben and jerry's has picked prison reform so a certain percentage of the people that work there mm-hmm. have to uh lgbt be ex- rights I yes think. yeah they also have lgbt rights um the people who work there have a certain percentage of them have to be ex-cons and another one they do is that they're very um they support the legalized movement so their ice cream half-baked some yeah. of the money from there goes to um supporting the cause so yeah, I, so that's my, I think that's my second prediction that coming out in 2021, you know, we're going to find out what all these brands are really about. Um, if you're wondering as a brand as well, like, you know, should you be joining the global fight for stop hate for profit in this region? Should you also be, um, you know, pausing your Facebook? It is a good question and it's one that needs to be thought through. Yeah. Um, it's definitely an opportunity to put your money in different places. Because, you know, just because you're stopping on Facebook doesn't mean you have to stop at all. There are yeah. up-and-coming platforms. TikTok has just uh, started its TikTok for business. Um, so there's definitely a lot of things that can be done for marketers who want to explore that. Yeah, and very um, cool things are happening at Sna- on Snapchat at the moment. Exactly. Um, Pinterest as well. You know, they're constantly innovating. And they're just the golden boy when it comes to um, being proactive with the social good causes. So, yeah. Definitely a lot of apps to explore. So if you are joining the fight, um, use this time to actually experiment with your channel mix as well. Yeah. Shiv, that was awesome. It's great. We're going to do it again next week, same time. What? Yeah. Yes, I can't do this every week. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. You know, it's content. It'll be perfect. <laughs>